So anyway, they called us in, into the room with the professor, and there was a few people in the room, quite a few people, and they said, we're sorry to have to tell you, but this is cancer. You know, and we come away, and, well, we were just devastated. She didn't ask me how I felt, and I felt terrible, really. Well, obviously, God knows how Graham felt, but I, I think I felt the same. Although it wasn't me, it was him, but I felt for him. Your family and friends are there, but it's not the same as... I think a stranger sometimes is better, don't you? Than, because you can say things, I think, to a stranger that you couldn't say to your family. I think, it, well, it would be nice if they did something for a carer, other than the patient. You know, meetings or things like that, where you can go and speak to another carer that is going through the same thing as yourself. I know you, you, I'm not the one with the cancer, but I think you're still going through that pain that's what they're going through. There must be so many people, like carers out there, that need someone to talk to. So how are you feeling now? I'm fine at the moment, to be honest. Hi, I'm Sharon. I was a carer for my husband whilst he had head and neck cancer. It was a role that I just fell into. It wasn't particularly something I wanted to do, but you just do it. It was only after or towards really the end of the journey that I realised that there's very little out there for a carer. Very little support, help, understanding of what a carer goes through. They're on the same journey as a cancer patient, but they're also on their own journey on how they deal with their patient and their selves and their emotions. Are you all right? So after Chris started to recover and we started to look at the swallows and a patient support group, I thought we needed something more for the carers. So the support groups we have now include carers, patients, family, friends, but we separate the carers, giving them the opportunity to tell us how they feel and to talk to people who have been in the same place as them. Part of the support group has a 24-7 number for patients to call. This has since been opened up for carers because carers need to talk to somebody, often when their patient's gone to bed or when the family have, have left and there's no further help for them that evening. So I now tend to manage that number 24-7. Most of their calls coming in in the early hours. Hello, Sharon speaking. Yeah. That's all right. that, that so often when the carer has been left alone, the patient's gone to bed, their family have gone to bed, and they have time to think and reflect on how they're feeling. Often those conversations can last for about an hour. We often discuss their emotions, how they feel guilty about their patient. They feel guilty about going out and leaving their patient, but it's all emotions that they don't want to discuss with the patient because they feel that they will then put more pressure on them. So the Swallows decided to work with Merck and their project Embracing Carers and they've helped us fund a project, uh, the Carers Project, that the Swallows have been running. Um, this project has been mainly run with Wendy Brown, our charity executive, and she'll tell you a little bit about what she's been doing. But the idea was to get a survey out to carers to find out what it is they need and then to look at the results from that and find out what we can do to help the carers going forward. Hello, my name is Wendy. Sharon has introduced me. I'm the charity executive for The Swallows and the main section of my role within The Swallows is to look after our carers project. I looked at the project in detail with Sharon and we decided that it would be beneficial to The Swallows if we looked at the cancer carers across all types of cancer. We felt that there was a possibility of trends that we could highlight just to see what is the best thing to do for carers in the future, if anything. We decided to look at the project on the basis of reaching people in the most direct way. So we decided that a survey would be our first step to try to get some data and statistics to help us see what is the best thing to do. The Swallows are working in collaboration with UCLan and specifically the research department and Professor Hazel Rodham is heading up the collaboration with us but we also have Zara over from Italy to help with the research. She has assisted us with putting the survey online and that is out on social media for us also. And this is the dashboard as they call it for the the opportunity that uh, I was thinking that was good for, for come here was to learn more about the research. So 
So I was involved in the Swallows uh, project as a collaborator because I'm a, uh, an inter-researcher, so they proposed me to collaborate with them about this project uh, for the carers. So it's another point uh, of view, it's like the other side of the coin. Sarah has come across to the university as a student and is taking six months to come and help us with the project and as part of her learning experience she will learn more English both in a practical manner and also in a written exam manner and that helps her with her studies and gets the needs of carers out across Europe. The survey itself, we came up with a series of questions for the carers to answer. The first section of those, we looked at demographics, we looked at economics, and we looked at ages and types of cancer that the carers cared for. The second section of the survey really went into more depthy questions with regards to emotions, feelings, impact physically, impact on families, and how the carers responded to that we're hoping will give us the idea of how we can help in the future. The survey itself was live online for a few months and from that we have been able to gather our data to allow us to analyse that. And if we click on this link it takes us direct to the survey. Yeah, I, I work here as a researcher in Allied Health Practice at UCLan and the university supports us to work with local services, organisations and the focus of all our work is on the applied benefit. So who benefits from the, the way that services are delivered? So in this case, we're focusing on the carers rather than the patients. We started talking with people who are carers to develop the topic guide for the questions. As a team, we all work together to develop and refine what the questions should be. And then Sarah, as our research intern, she was the one who worked with the uh, computer software to make this into an online survey. I was really happy to, to, to be involved in this project because I could help them about the analyzing data and create some graph and also we were involved in some pilot interview for the carers. So I think the, it's really important to give the, them the voice. The data is in the, the words of the people who've responded, is very powerful. But we need to, to get the evidence in people's own words. And so the, the survey results have been very important and very powerful to document this. So it's not just anecdote, but this is a robust study that has uh, been responded to by people right across the UK. So with the help of the team at UCLan, we have done some independent analysis of the statistics and this will allow us to look at what carers today of all types of cancers deal with every day with their patients and from that we hope to be able to highlight what is needed going forward for those carers. What do they want? What is the support needs? After having a look at the questions in the survey, we decided that we needed to delve a little a bit deeper. So we decided to set up some focus groups across the country. So not only is this carers of all types of cancer patients, but it is all over the UK. And that was very important to us that we would look at this broad view because we didn't know what carers needed, but we also didn't know if there were certain trends for certain cancers or for certain areas in the UK. In this room, it's comfortable for you to say what you want. From the findings that we have, we have noticed that there are certain themes which we feel we need to delve into in a more close manner and we propose to do this through focus groups across the country. They may be one-to-one -one with the carers because carers may not have the time to attend a focus group or we hope to get a number of people together at one time and look at support and look at what is needed in their lives. The project is something that I'm very passionate about and I do feel that carers today need to have their voice heard and I'd just like to thank Mahela at Merck for her support to the Swallows for this project. It's something that is definitely needed and the fact that Merck have recognised that and assisted us with ours is fantastic. 
We're doing this for all the right reasons. What it we think this is a unique study and the findings of this study are really going to be used to help to make an impact, to, to change uh, and develop new services and support in the way that people want it. It's been a listening project to find out what we need to do in the future. As you can see, there's a lot of hard work gone into that project and the findings so far show us that a booklet written by carers for carers along with a film for the carers need to be developed. But we also need to make sure that the 24-7 number for carers is out there and available to every carer to use. So with the help of Merck, we are proud and excited to showcase at tonight's event our poster. The posters will be handed out to you very shortly, but in the meantime, I would like to thank my colleagues and Merck with their Embracing Carers programme for helping and supporting the Swallows with our Carers project.